you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we worship the Lord today? Yes, God. Thank you, God.
2 Samuel this morning. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. 2 Samuel. Right after 1 Samuel. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Yes. <laughs> Before Kings. <laughs> yep. So, First Samuel, Second Samuel, First Kings, Second Kings. Amen. Second uh, Samuel chapter nine. It reads, David asks, "Is there anyone still left in the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake?" Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They summoned him to appear before David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? At your service, he replied. And the king asked, Is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, He is at the house of Machir, son of Amiel, in Lodabar. So King David had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Machir, son of Amiel. Verse 6, When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may have your seats. Amen. I want to preach today briefly from the subject of I have a reservation. How many people know the story of King David? King David. I'm going to catch everyone up just to make sure everyone is on the same page. That we are all caught up. So I don't want anyone to get lost. If I come in on this and you don't know David's story, then you're going to, uh, you're not going to catch on to what I'm exactly trying to say. We all know, let's back up a little bit before David. We all know the first king of Israel's name was Saul. Amen. The people begged for a king. Yes, they did. And God said, all right, well, I'm supposed to be your king, but I'll appoint a king over you. You know what I mean? And, and they got Saul. Saul was disobedient to God. Yes, he was. Samuel told him not to do something. Saul decided he was going to do it anyway. Yeah. Samuel told him to do something. Saul decided, I don't want. You know, he was just disobedient. And so God said, well, I'm removing my spirit from him. I no longer want Saul as king. In fact, I'm going to find someone else to be the king of Israel in his place. And so David was a shepherd boy one of Jesse's sons and, and sent Samuel the prophet to anoint David as king and, and they went through all the sons and they, they anointed David but see the way things worked was David couldn't just waltz up in there and be like alright God shows me I'm the king now that's not the way things work that's right. kings were either made so by secession so if a king had a son that son would have rightful place to the throne or whoever the next person in line. We see this happening even uh, if we look in, in, in England right now. We want to know who's the next queen of England or king of England is going to be. And we kind of, if you've ever kind of uh, looked at that, you can see how the secession works. Or a king can be appointed by a, a king. A king can say, okay, well, I am leaving as my successor, this person, as the next king. Or a king can be conquered and then overthrown and then the person that has conquered them would become the king. That's right. Well, David was chosen by Samuel, by God, to be the next king. However, he had to sit under Saul in order to learn the kingdom. That's right. Saul became jealous because he pretty much kind of knew this is the next king. This dude is about to take the throne and my lineage will no longer sit on the throne. Every good person, every good king, every good, I don't care who you are, if you own a business, you want that business to stay in your family when you die. That's right. 
You are hoping the family business is the family business and you will try your hardest to figure out which child of mine will be the next CEO of whatever business I have designed, whatever church. I, I pray even now, I, I'm beginning to look and I'm not going to push nothing on her, but I really would love and it would, it would bless my soul if eventually Maya would take over this position. And if not Maya, then maybe Mariah will do it. Amen. Amen. And, and, and maybe she will, will take over this position when I no longer can preach. Amen. And I'd be alive to see it because like I always told y'all, y'all don't want 80 year old me up here preaching. You barely want 40 year old of me up here preaching. I get off track real easy. So in any case, we done fell asleep. We done fell asleep in the middle of the sermon. When I hit about 70, 80, it's going to be over. So in any case, <laughs> any case, David, Jonathan wanted, I mean, Saul wanted Jonathan, his son. He wanted the, the kingdom to stay in his lineage. And when he caught wind, that this, this guy David is coming in and he's doing a whole lot in his kingdom. I mean, the people loved him. Boy, they loved some David. They would make up songs about David and, and how well he fought in battle. And Saul became jealous. And Saul said in his mind, he said, I'm about to kill David. David had married his daughter and he would have been contested for the rightful throne with Jonathan. Jonathan was David's best friend and Jonathan already said, hey, it's on you, bruh. I will submit to you. Jonathan already knew, you know, hey, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm with David. Whatever David wants, I'm with him. And, they, and Saul knew this. And so Saul said, I'm about to kill him. That's right. I can't stand this dude, David. David, David, they they singing songs about David. David is not going to sit on my throne. So he goes and he starts to make a whole little campaign to kill him. David runs. He leaves the kingdom. Right. And we know the, we follow David all through the story. He don't do everything just right, but, but David is on the run. And eventually, Saul and Jonathan are killed in battle. That's right. They come and they find David and they say, David, Saul was killed in battle, which would make uh, David the next in line for the throne. So then David comes back to Israel. He takes the rightful place of king, just as God had said. He had anointed him. And he takes the rightful place of king. And he sits on the throne. And one of the first things that he does is he requests that somebody from Saul's household come and have audience with him. Now understand that this was not even heard of back then. See, back then, if you are a new king and you have taken over the dynasty from someone else, you would either kill everybody that had anything, anyone that was loyal to that former king, I can't, either I will banish you, get out of my kingdom, or I'm going to kill you. One or two, if you're a family member or anything like that, get out. Right. Or I kill you. One or two, depending on what type of king I am, hey, get out. Because I can't have you having a, and getting a, some type of, of uprising against me and overthrowing me. So I can't have folks that was loyal to the previous king sitting up in the, the current kingdom. Amen? Right. Amen? We know how this works, you know. This, this, this is kind of common sense, but I'm just making sure that y'all understand. David said, I want to see somebody from Saul's household. And they said, okay, well, he does have a grandson. Jonathan's son is still alive. Yes. And he is living in low Debar. And he says, go and get this man and bring him before me. Yes. Understand, when Mephibosheth was uh, about five years old is when the battle took place. Between this is when his father and his grandfather were killed. His nurse picked him up and ran with him, tripped and fell and dropped him, causing him to break both of his legs. Immediately, when his legs did not heal properly, he would have been disqualified for the throne. Yes. The, 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 what he had, the, the problem with his legs would have disqualified him from being king. Yes. In fact, he would have, as we see, would have been banished from the kingdom under ordinary kings because the only people that were allowed in family lineage and, and imagine in the family picture, we're going to hide cousin so-and-so because he ain't just, you know, we don't want, he embarrassing us, so we're going to hide. This was my 
Mephibosheth. He's the one that's hiding because he's not perfect. Mephibosheth got something wrong with him, so we can't have him tarnishing what this dynasty is supposed to look like. He, he, he's crippled. He can't walk straight. And so we're going to put him away in a place called Lodabar. And so he's in Lodabar, and Lodabar literally means without pasture. So this is a place where it has no life to it. There is nothing that can grow in Lodabar. It's a barren and dry yes, land. Yes, yes. And we find that Mephibosheth has been living there. And so David says, bring him from Lodabar and bring him before me because I want to honor him. And so he brings Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the crippled man, and he brings him before the king, and he bows down before him, yes. and David looks at him yes. and says, do not be afraid. That's right. Because what I'm about to do, more than just honor you by saying good job, I'm not going to give you just a certificate and shake your hand and send you back to Lodabar, but I am pulling you out of Lodabar. Not only that, I am going to restore to you all of the land that belonged to your family that is now yours. And not only that, I know that you are not supposed to even be in the castle right now, but because of who your daddy was, I am about to put you at my table and you will always have a seat here. No matter what you look like, no matter you're not quite right, no matter that you walk with a limp, no matter something happened to you back in the day, no matter other people look at you and say you're not good enough, no matter other people will tell you to go back to Lodabar, but me, because I am just, because I have the heart of God, I am going to honor you and you have a reservation here and I hear the voice of God saying that some of us have been placed in Yeah. At the king's table, 
tell you that you ain't got no seat at the table. I have a standing reservation at the table of God. A standing reservation. See, so many people tell us based on whatever discriminating factor that we not even allowed at the table. Right. How dare you even sit at the table? Just like Mephibosheth. If Mephibosheth on his own behalf would have come with that limp, would have come with whatever cane, would have come, I'm sure if he's living in Lodabar, he's dirty. I'm sure if he is living in Lodabar, he's poor. I'm sure that his clothes may be tattered. I'm sure that he probably spruced himself up just as much as he could, but his hair probably was disheveled. He probably had a, a, a shadow and, and the hair on his face was probably all grown out and, and he probably didn't smell exactly like they smell because he didn't have access to all the oils and the bathing. And so if he would have come in on his own, they would have turned him around at the gate. Mephibosheth wouldn't even made it past the guard at the front of the castle. But David called for him. Yes. Yeah. David said, go get him yes. and Come bring him now. to me. Right. I don't care where he is. Y'all go and find That's him right. That's right. and bring him here. Yes. 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 See, we got to be zebras in this room. Yes. Yes. See, as servants of the king, sometimes once we realize I have a seat at the table, yes. We then have to turn around and say, well, other folks do too. Mm -hmm. That's right. yeah. And when we catch wind that the king may have one of his children on the outskirts of the city. See, there's plenty of folks that belong to God who are on the outskirts of the city. Yes. They're royal by nature. Yes. They're part of yes. the royal priesthood, but yes. they're on the outside of the kingdom. And, and so we have to be like Zeba and say, where are they, God? Yeah. yeah, come on, Pastor. <laughs> and see, sometimes we don't want to leave the beautiful, clean castle yeah. in order to step into dirty, yeah. dusty Lodabar right. in order to get nobody. But I declare today that we shake off that spirit of too good. Yeah. We have become safe, so now we too good. And I, I declare today that, that we decide to be like Ziba. That's and right. despite the fact that my shoes are nice and now shine them up and I'm living in the king's castle, I still don't mind getting into the chariot and walking through the dust and the dirt of Lodabar yeah. to go and grab up somebody that rightfully belongs where I am. That's right. That's right. And that's the spirit that we need to take from within this church. There are folks out there that need to know that they belong, that the seat that is at the table is reserved in their name. Yes. And we're the ones to do it. Amen. Amen. We're the ones to do it. Why? Amen. Because Zeba was there by grace himself. That's right. Yes. That's right, Pastor. What I say? Amen. Anybody that was loyal to Saul oh. should have been killed or banished. That's right. That's right. But when you read the scripture and you look at it, Zeba was still in the kingdom. Amen. Because by the grace of God, yes. by David's heart, David didn't put him to death. So by the grace of God, we in the kingdom. So we should go out there and get somebody else. That's right. yes. You ain't the only one. That's you right. ain't got a reservation. Yes. There's other brothers and sisters out there that have reservations too. They just need you to go and let them know your table is ready. Yes. That's all you got to do. Just tap them on the day. Your table is ready. <laughs> just tap them on the day. They might not know what you're talking about. It's just an inside joke. Hey, I'm inviting you to come and understand that God loves you. There's a seat at the table on your behalf. Amen. 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 They might not even think you're crazy when you say, oh, that's going to be my status of the day. Your table is ready. Okay. And ain't nobody going to know what you're talking about. What table? <laughs> the table of God has been set on your behalf. Amen. Amen.